Yum, yum! In this video, I'm going to show you how to take the result of the rounded edge shader here in Moto and bake that to a normal map that you can use in Substance Painter. So here I have this simple mesh part. This is like a hard surface shape. And uh, here you can see that I have these hard edges. And a lot of these shapes that you see here were created just by uh, you know, using simple beveling and Boolean operations. So here's my low res mesh. First thing I'm going to do uh, is just duplicate this guy. And uh, I'm going to call this high. So this is going to end up being my high res mesh. And for now, I'm just going to disable this guy because we're just going to be concentrating here on the low res mesh for now. So I have UVs. Uh, here in the other map section, you can see that it's blank. And what I'm going to do here is just set up my hard edges. So uh, I always work here in the Game Tools tab within Moto. So I'm going to come over here to the Game Tools, and underneath the Vertex Map category, I'm going to use this option here, which allows me to harden the selected edges, uh, which are sharper than the angle that I specify here. So I use this 30 30 degree setting, and then I'm going to click this button here, and that's going to create for me uh, this hard edge, or excuse me, this vertex normal map that uh, stores that information. So now that I have this set, I'm now going to uh, take a look at the UVs. So let's click our UV view button here, and let's select the UV map, and you can see that uh, right now our UVs are pretty terrible. So let's fix this. So now that um, I have these hard edges here on this mesh, I can actually use these hard edges to uh, quickly unwrap this. So what I do is I use this option here, which allows me to select the hard edges on my mesh. So I do that, and you can see that I have these hard edges selected. Now, uh, because of the way these polygons are kind of running in this loop here, I'm going to go into edge mode and just select another edge here that's going to help me with uh, the uh, cut of the UVs when I use the unwrap tool. So now let's come over to the model tab. And here in the UV section, I'm going to use the unwrap tool and then just do a left click here. And you can see that that unwraps my model based on these hard edges. So the next thing I want to do is just pack these maps. So what I do is just use the simple pack UVs command. So here I'll select my mesh. I'll just come over to pack UVs. And now I'm going to run this. Uh, actually, here for the direction, I'm going to set this to horizontal. Now, it's important to set this gap setting. So the rule is, is that whenever you have a smoothing split, so that's what these hard edges are, is a smoothing split here on my mesh. I want to make sure that I have a UV split with padding that corresponds to that smoothing split. So if you don't have that, when you bake your normal, you'd end up getting kind of a dark line right around the seam here. So again, to fix that issue, you want to make sure that wherever you have a smoothing split, you have a corresponding UV split with padding. So here, what I do for my gaps is I'm going to set this to a pretty high value, like maybe something like 45. And then I'll just click OK. And so here, you can see that this just packs my maps. So let me go in and take a look at my padding here. And uh, you know maybe, I'd, maybe that's not enough. Uh, so here, let's just be, uh, be a little bit more safe with it. And let's just take this up to maybe 65. So I'll run this again, and now I have more padding here. So I think that's going to be fine for what we want to do. All right, so that takes care of my UV map, and that takes care of uh, my setting of my vertex normal for now. So one last thing I want to do for this low res mesh is I want to make sure that I uh, triangulate this. So here I'm just going to hit Shift T on the keyboard, and that's going to triangulate my mesh. Now lastly, uh, in terms of vertex maps, I want to make sure that I set the correct tangent basis for this. Because again, my goal is that I'm going to be baking my normal map here inside of Modo because I want to utilize this rounded edge shader. But I'm going to be doing all the texturing inside of Substance Painter. And so if you bake in one application and it's using a uh, specific tangent basis, and then you try to render that in another application uh, that's using a different tangent basis, that's when you'll typically start to see some shading issues within your normal map. So in order to sync this workflow, meaning that we're going to use the same tangent basis to bake the normal as well as the same tangent basis to render the normal, we're going to go here to our game tools. And with my object selected, I'm going to use this underneath Mesh Tangents, Create Mic Tangent Basis. So I'm going to enable this option here. And I'm going to choose Create Mic Tangent Basis. And now you'll see that uh, we here we have a tangent basis for our type here in our other map. Now, Substance Painter also uses the MicT tangent basis for baking and rendering the normal in the viewport. So this means that we're now going to have a synced workflow. All right, so that takes care of our low res mesh. So I'm just going to disable that for now. And now we'll uh, enable our high res mesh. 
So to create the high res mesh, we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to rely on the, the rounded edge shader to do this for us. So with this mesh selected, I'm going to hit M on the keyboard and I'm just going to just type in high for the polygon material type. And let's come over here to our shader tree. And here is the material. So now let's open up our preview window and let's do a quick render here. And so here's our object. Now what I want to do is just come over here to the material and uh, I'll come to the uh, material properties and underneath the surface normal, you'll see that we have the rounded edge width and by default it's set to zero. So I'm going to switch this to something like 15 millimeters. And so now you can see here in the preview window, we're starting to get these really nice kind of beveled edges here. And you can see where the highlights really catch on these edges. And that's great. So this is a, a shading technique. We're able to do this here in a renderer. And so that we can use this in another application, like say Substance Painter or in our game engine like Unreal, we need to bake this down to a normal map. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is that I've noticed that whenever I'm working with a mesh that's really, really small, uh, I get issues when I bake my normal map. So for instance, if my, if my mesh is small and my rounded edge width is something like one millimeter, uh, when I was baking my normal, I was, I, it always gives me some type of issues on my edges. So as long as I have my, my mesh size uh, fairly, you know, a little bit larger, and then you can see that I'm using a value of say like 15 millimeters, it tends to give me a more clean result. Uh, so that's why I try to work this way. So in terms of my high res mesh, that, that's it. You know, that's all I'm doing is I'm just really letting the rounded edge do all the heavy lifting for me. All right, so now I've got my uh, high res mesh set. Uh, we can close out our preview here and let's jump back over to items and I can just disable this guy and we'll come into here into our low res mesh. And now we can actually start the baking process. So uh, here underneath the uh, game tools, uh, there is a baking section here and there is a baking wizard. So I'm gonna run the baking wizard. So here we need to start to, uh, well, set up our settings that we're gonna use for our bake. Now for the width and height, I'm gonna use a 2K image. So 2048 by 2048. And uh, for the uh, file format, I'm gonna use PNG. So right here, you have this uh, section here for base file name. And then down here, you have this section for new target material. So what you can do with this is uh, the base file name. This is going to be the, 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 well, the base file name of the texture you create. So we're going to be creating a normal texture. So this is going to be the name of the texture will be bake. All right. So that's going to be this first part. We have this new target material. And what's going to happen here in our shader tree is uh, Modo is going to create this new target material called bake. And it's going to put our texture in here because there is a specific naming convention that you can use uh, for Substance Painter. So like when you create your Substance Painter project and if you name things correctly, then uh, and you import in those textures in that uh, import configuration, Painter will automatically assign the textures where they need to go in the texture set list. And so we just want to set that up here inside of Modo so that, uh, you know, it's just a little less hassle for us. So like I said, I want to set this to be bake. Uh, it could be anything. I'm just using bake for now. And then, like I said, I'm going to create a new target material called bake. So again, inside of uh, Painter, we have uh, something called a texture set. Now, a texture set in Painter is just a material ID here inside of Modo. So I'm going to be creating a shader group uh, here in Modo, and this new target material is going to be called bake. So as long as the texture's base name is the same as the material, Substance Painter will be able to match it to the correct texture set. Now there's also another caveat to that where you need to be able to tag the texture type. And we'll take care of that here in just a little bit. So that's why for now, I'm gonna keep this bake and this new target material, I'm gonna set this to bake. All right, so now that we have that, the last thing that we really need to focus on is this distance setting. Now you could just use a cage, which be which would probably be a lot more simpler because it's you know it would remove a lot of the guesswork here. But uh, honestly, I don't know why I just don't really like working with the morph map uh, functionality of that. So here for the distance, I just need to you know come up with something that's going to work. And like I said, it's kind of a trial and error. Uh, so here, I think I'm going to try setting this to something like 100, and then we'll see we'll see how that goes. All right, so next step, I need to set my source and target. So uh, here's my low, that is the target. So I'm just gonna hit the checkbox here underneath target. And then the high res mesh, again, this is the high res mesh that has the, uh, the shader group with the material utilizing the rounded edge shader. So that's what's really making this my high res mesh. So that's gonna become uh, my source. So let me make sure I have that right. So low is my target and high is my source. So next step here, 
existing outputs uh, i don't really care about this so i'll just next step again all right so here is the new outputs and what i do for this is i add a texture output and i choose normal so this guy here now i've already done that so it shows up here uh, now this invert green is specific to Moto, so it's just so that I could view this correctly inside of Moto. Now for the suffix here, this again is the other important uh, part I said about making sure that Painter can recognize the texture and apply it automatically to the texture set. So uh, like I said, I, first off I need the file name of the texture to start with the name of the material that is the texture set is created from inside of Painter. The other part of that is that I need to tag the texture. So notice I have this suffix of underscore normal underscore base. And this is the specific naming convention uh, used inside of Painter. So here I'm looking at the Substance Painter documentation. And if you come over to the Getting Started uh, Project Creation section, so I'll just run this here, uh, this is going to talk to you about how to create a new project. And if I scroll down, here you're going to see the naming convention for additional maps. Now notice, like I said, I want to create a normal, so I need to make sure that the suffix to that is going to be normal underscore base. And that's where I'm getting that name from. Okay, so back here in Moto, we have everything set, and now I can just run the bake. So I'm just going to click here, bake only, and we'll let Moto do its baking thing. Okay, so Moto has baked my normal map, and that's what it looks like. You'll also notice here that in the shader tree, uh, that new material called bake was created for me. And now I have a texture using the naming convention I've chosen. So bake underscore normal base. And this bake part is matching the name of the material that I'm going to apply to my low res mesh. All right. So like I said, again, we just have our low res mesh enabled. And it's here that I'm in the advanced viewport. We can see the normal applied. So here, let me turn off my uh, wireframe here. So I'll toggle my verts. And uh, here we go, my wireframe. Here's the result of what we get from that bake. So you can see that uh, we get a very clean normal map bake here from that rounded edge shader. So now we need to export our low res mesh. Uh, before we do that, there was one thing I forgot to mention about uh, one of the bake settings. So if you come up here to system uh, preferences, you want to make sure that underneath rendering here, final rendering, there's a setting here for bake UV border size. And I think by default, it might be set to like one or zero. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, you set this value higher. Like for instance, I use 32. And that's going to pad the bake beyond uh, the boundary of the UV shell. So you want to make sure that you set this to a higher value. Like for example, for this bake, I had it set to 32. Um, okay, so like I said, now we want to export uh, the FBX here. So like I said, we created uh, this shader group in the bake. So it's just a shader group and we have our normal map. Now notice there's no material in this. Uh, that's okay. We don't, we don't need it uh, because uh, here in our list, uh, underneath our other maps, our smoothing is being controlled here by the vertex normal map that we created. So I don't need to, I'm not using the material to set anything like that. So I don't, I really don't even need it. But what's important is this shader group. Cause like I said, in painter, that's going to become the texture set itself. So um, here, if we take a look at this shader group, you'll notice here that uh, item is set to all and polygon tag is set to all. So if I just export like this, uh, bake, this is going to work. Now I have another shader group here, uh, and this is polygon tag is set to high. So this, this shader group is uh, specifically being linked to that high res mesh, which we have uh, disabled uh, visibility here for now. So it, it this wouldn't even matter, this group. So the only group that's actually going to export is this one. Uh, of course, if you needed to, you could try to set a polygon tag for this, uh, or you know, if you if you had a bunch of other uh, groups uh, that that could conflict with this, you could also take your item and just set it to the actual mesh itself, like this. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, we know that th this guy's going to export uh, correctly here. Um, okay, so. Um, now that I have this guy selected here, uh, I'm going to come over to my preferences and I'm just going to talk about the FBX IO preferences that I use. So first for the export type, I always have this set to export selection. So here we have our mesh selected and this is precisely what's going to get exported. Uh, save geometry and save materials. Uh, I usually keep that on. Uh, like I said, in this case, we, we don't even care. We don't, we don't have the material. Uh, I turn off these guys, save camera lights, uh, and uh, also want to make sure that save smoothing groups is enabled. So that's important. And then here in this case, save tangent basis. We need to have that enabled. Because like I said, what we've done here, uh, and you can see it in our other maps, uh, we have a texture map that was created, or this vertex map uh, that's set to a tangent basis. 
So we are specifically wanting to save that MCT tangent basis that we created here in the FBX. Now, the way Substance Painter works is that if you import an FBX and it does read uh, tangents in that FBX, then it will use those in the baking process. If Painter, if you import an FBX in Painter and there are no tangents, then Painter will uh, just automatically use MCT to compute the tangents. So in our case, because we baked the normal mat, we specifically have to make sure that we're going to save the tangent basis in our FBX. All right, so now that we have that, I leave everything else at default and we're ready to go. So we can now uh, just come up here to File and we'll do Export As. And I just save it on the desktop. I called it part and I make sure that I'm using the FBX 2015 and then I just save. So here we'll just replace this. Now we'll jump over to Painter and uh, we'll take a look at creating the project. Okay, so here we are in Painter. Let's come up here to file and choose new to create a new project. And we're gonna set our mesh to be the part.fbx we just exported from Modo. And uh, for the starting document resolution, I'm going to set this to 2K. And here in this section, I can start to import any additional maps, such as the normal map that we baked. So I'll click the Add button, and I'll choose our normal map and click Open. OK, so here I have everything set up. I'll click OK, and Painter is going to create my project. So here is the result that we have. We have our normal map applied. And you can see that the result is super clean here inside of Substance Painter. Here in the texture set list, you can see that I have the bake texture set, which was derived from that shader group that we created in Modo. And uh, here in the additional map for that texture set, you can see that our normal map is automatically applied because we adhered to that naming convention of using our material and then the suffix being the additional map ID, in our case, normal underscore base. So now that uh, everything's imported and ready to go, I can start the texturing process. Uh, here, since I have this normal map, I can actually start to bake other textures here directly in Painter. So let's come over to our baked textures. Now, I don't need to worry about a high definition mesh anymore uh, because uh, we're utilizing our normal for that. So I'm going to disable my normal map. For my output size, let's set this to 2K for my texture. And uh, I'm going to turn off my ID map. But I do want to bake a world space, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and well, we'll turn off thickness for now. All right, so now that we have all this, I'm going to click the Bake Textures button, and it's going to bake these textures here based on my normal map. And so here you can see the process was pretty quick, and now I have uh, all these additional maps. So just so we can get an idea of how this is working, let's jump over here to our smart materials. Here, maybe I'll use one of these uh, smart materials that I've created. So let me just drag and drop this guy in. Uh, so here we go. You can see that I've got some edgeware and uh, all that's applying correctly here to the mesh. Uh, again, because uh, these baked maps that I generated here from my normal map. So as you can see, baking the result of the rounded edge shader inside of Modo and bringing that into Painter is a pretty straightforward process. Uh, the main things that uh, that you want to be aware of is that you know you triangulate the low res mesh, you apply the uh, MIC tangent basis to that uh, before you bake. So that way you're going to have this synced normal workflow between Modo and Substance Painter. Yum yum.